Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reading related video. And so because of that, I thought I would change the background up a little bit and add a few more books into my background. So I'm basically like sitting on the floor because my books are all on lower shelves. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video. The main reason why I'm doing this video is because I have books that are due at the library, like literally today, um, or maybe tomorrow. And I like having the physical copy of the book to hold up as I talk about it. And so I wanted to do this video before I return the books to the library. So this will be a what I've been reading or what I've read for the month of February and up until now in the March month of March. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the books. I have four. The first one is this one. It is Cinder by Marissa Meyer, and this is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles series. There's four books total, and I think there's like one or two companion like novellas as well. Um, I've actually read this twice. The first one I read about three, three and a half years ago, and then I went through like three books in the series. The fourth book had just come out, and then I started grad school. I had to stop reading for fun for about two years, and then... Um, since I now am out of grad school and I have time to finish reading this series, I wanted to start over from the beginning because I had forgotten a lot of the details, the style of writing, the way the characters kind of interact with each other that a summary is not going to give you. So I'm re I read it again in the month of February and this book takes place in the future um, and the current location is New Beijing and it follows this girl Lynn Cinder who is a cyborg and a mechanic and because she's a cyborg her family treats her especially her adoptive mother treats her like an object or a possession because technically under the law she is and basically just something that provides extra income to the family so Lynn is a mechanic, or sorry, Cinder is a mechanic, and she um, has this reputation of being a great mechanic, and she ends up meeting the Prince of New Beijing, and they start to build this relationship. Now, um, Cinder is, because she's has is meeting the king not the king the the prince and ends up building this relationship with him she ends up getting wrapped up in a lot of different parts of her greater environment and, and kind of world the things that are happening in the world that she might not otherwise have been one of them is that um, there is this threat from the moon there are inhabitants on the moon called lunars who are able to more or less um, kind of it's described as creating illusions. So um, so they're able to kind of control people by creating this certain different illusions. And there's this threat that, you know, under the moon, the lunar kingdom's queen, that the, you know, the moon is going to basically take over the earth. And so uh, Cinder gets kind of wrapped up in that sort of like political intrigue. And then there's also this domestic problem of this plague that has kind of, swept the earth and there's no known treatment or or cure for it and um cinder finds out that she might be able to help find a cure so those are some of the things that she's dealing with along with wanting to kind of you know get away from her adoptive mother and kind of strike out on her own so the first time I read this, I gave it a five out of five stars. I really liked it. I think this is one of the first kind of YA novels that I had really started to get back into um, while I was reading, uh, doing kind of this more fun read. But since then, and since having read it a second time, I've kind of dropped my score to a four out of five stars. And part of that is because I was thinking if... I'm giving it a five out of five stars, then this would be a book that I would want to have on my shelves. Maybe not my current shelves because they are small and limited in space and also it's a lot of money to, you know, purchase books. But eventually, you know, ideally, what would I want to personally own? And while I think that this book is good, and I think that the series from what I remember is good, I don't think that this is a series that I would want to stick on my shelves and then like if other people were like, ooh, you know, what is that? And then like have them read it. So I would definitely recommend the book. So, you know, four out of five stars, that's still pretty good, but not one that I would personally want on my shelves. Does that make sense? Um, so anyway, I think the writing style was good. It's not you know, it's not bad, but it's not amazing. And I, I was 
engaged by the characters and, and by the storyline. I have heard some people f say that they found it boring, but I thought that it was like, it was just an easy read for me and I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the series. I'm or this first book, I am going to continue the series as well and finish it. So those were my thoughts on Cinder. Okay, the second book that I read is In an Absent Dream, and this is by Shannon McGuire. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire, and this series focuses on children who discover doorways to alternate worlds and go into those worlds, kind of like Alice did in Alice in Wonderland. And then it also explores the effects of leaving the world and kind of what happens to the children and then, you know, how the children are affected um, internally and how, you know, it affects their families and, and the people around them. So that's what the first book kind of introduces us to. And then the subsequent books, including this one, focus on the, some of the characters we met in the first book and tells a little bit more about their backstory. So um, we learn about the actual different, actual different worlds that the children have been to and then what caused them to return back into like our world. So this one follows Lundy who is, as the book describes her, a serious young girl who finds that she doesn't, she's kind of a loner and doesn't really fit with her community and even her family. And so she finds a doorway to the Goblin Market. And the Goblin Market is a highly logical world where one of the big rules of the Goblin Market is that trade needs to have fair value. And so she kind of grows up with this rule of fair value. And she finds that she really fits in and really loves the Goblin Market world. But I thought what was interesting about this book is that this book does kind of explore both worlds. So Lundy is able to walk back and forth between worlds up until a certain point where she has to make a final decision. And so you see her go through that process of trying to figure out which world she ultimately wants to be in. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting look at, you know, it's not just I'm here and then something bad happened and I got kicked out. It's I have to decide which world I want to be in. She ultimately makes a choice and I'm not going to say what happens. But um, I did give this a five out of five stars on Goodreads. Me personally, I think this is like a four out of, four point five out of five, but I always round up on Goodreads. Um, this overall series is a series I would put on my bookshelves, um, which is why I gave it such a high score. I, this is probably my second favorite book in the series, the first one being the previous book, which is, I think, Under a Sugared Sky. I just really liked the worlds for this. I think that the author's writing style is just, she does just a really great job of creating a world in a pretty short amount of time. Like, this book is two... 200, 204 pages. And yet I have what I feel like is a pretty good understanding of what the goblin market world is like and um, how it definitely differs from our own world and kind of what this character has had to go through. So overall, really like this book. I highly recommend this series overall. I think that it's really good. All right, the next book that I read is this one. It is The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, and this is by Lisa C. So this is actually a book I would never have read before or never would have picked up, um, but my community is doing this one reads. I have a, I think I went into a little bit more detail in this in my To Be Read um, for February and March. So I'll leave a link to that um, with a timestamp of um, where I talk about kind of what my community or what my city does about this. But this is the book that they chose for this year. And this follows a girl, Li Yan, and her family. And they are part of the Akka people, which are an ethnic minority in China. And they live in this remote mountain village where tea production or tea leaf production is kind of the um, the main the mainstay, the, the main industry for them. And this takes place in 1996, which, you know, is fairly modern. I mean, I know that's like 20 years old now, but, you know, for me, having grown up in the 90s, I was like, oh, that's, that's fairly, fairly modern. And yet she is living this very traditional and ritualistic lifestyle. And so 
um, what we see is Leon and her family, and we see all of their, their traditions and rituals, and then this man from modern China, you know, from Hong Kong, um, comes in and wants to buy tea and create a larger, you know, industry, com more commercial industry um, and work with this village and so Leon is kind of wrapped up in this modernization so um, one of the things that this book follows is that Leon does get pregnant and has to, has to give up her baby for adoption and so we see her as she is going through life dealing with this idea with, with modernization and with becoming someone who's very knowledgeable about tea but also thinking about the what ifs and what has happened to her daughter and wanting to find her daughter and then we also follow the daughter who ends up being adopted by an American couple and we see little snippets of the daughter's life which slowly become larger snippets of the daughter's life as the story progresses. So you kind of see the two lives, you know, going this way and they slowly kind of get a little bit closer to each other. I loved this book. It is, like I said, completely out of my normal range of books that I would read, but I just really love the writing style. I thought that it was very poetic. I like that it was from a first person point of view. I like that it was about a, it was a voice that we wouldn't normally hear from. And so for that reason, I gave this a five out of five stars. This would definitely be a book that I would put on my shelves. So my thoughts on this one. All right, the last book that I read up until now is The Woman in Cabin 10, and this is by Ruth Ware. So my understanding is that this is a suspense or like thriller type novel, and I'm gonna just tell you right off the bat, I gave this a three out of five stars. This is a book from my own bookshelves that I had purchased for I think like 50 cents from a library book sale, and it's gonna be going back to be redonated to the library. Um, it was okay, and I'm not going to rule out reading other Ruth Ware books, but I think what I found from the few thriller suspense, like this style, this genre of book, from what I've read, and I've only read that I can remember like three, I've read this one, The Last Mrs. Parrish, and Gone Girl, those are the ones I can definitely remember, and they all follow this very similar style of plot where even like the plot itself is different the themes are different but it's this build up for the first like 40 percent to 50 percent of the book and then something happens and then the book gets really interesting and lots of things happen in the second half of the book and i find it very difficult to get through the first half of the book because of that i am someone who about who at, at about 60 pages tends to put books down. And so for that reason, a book that doesn't get interesting until at least 100 pages in or about halfway through the book, like halfway through the book is like 140 pages in, I'm more likely to put that book down. And so I struggled a lot with this book. You know, 60 pages in, she's on the cruise ship and she's meeting people, but that's it. And I was like, where is this book going? So to kind of give you a little overview of what this book is about, this book follows Laura, who goes by the nickname Lo, and she is a travel journalist who's given this amazing opportunity to go on the maiden voyage of this luxury cruise ship and um, as part of like a media tour, and then she gets to write about it. So she gets to experience this amazing like luxury cruise. But um, before she's able to get on the cruise, like a week before she gets burglarized or burgled, I guess is I think the correct word, while she's at home. And so this kind of traumatizes her a little bit, clearly, you know, because you're in there when someone has, you know, gotten into your, your place. And so she's really on edge. And so that kind of sets the mood for the rest of this book. The fact that she's really kind of spooked a lot of the time and then she sees something while she's on this cruise towards the beginning of the cruise and she says something and then there's a lot of doubt thrown on what she said because of what has happened to her because of other things that um that come up and so another thing that I really struggled with 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 was this idea that of this not believing in a person's story or believing in what a person says. And so I liked that the character did not give up and did not let people, um, like other individuals doubts 
affect her ability to understand her truth and her reality. Um, like she didn't let people cause doubt on herself and her own story. So I did appreciate that, but it was really difficult for me to read because of that. Cause I just was just like, uh, the whole time, like why, like, uh, you know, between her, her own trauma, uh, from, from the, the burglary incident and then what she sees and, you know, not people not believing her. So three out of five stars. I, I want, I'm hoping it's just the topic that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm not like put off from Ruth Ware's, uh, writing style. I thought that was pretty good. So I would be interested in reading some of her other books, but I'm also curious to know from you all, um, one, do you have any thrillers or suspense type, like this sort of style book that follows a similar, uh, that doesn't follow that similar plot line of like, slow 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 build up and then sudden change that creates this really interesting second half of the book like is there a little bit more interest sprinkled in the beginning or are they all kind of like that i did listen to an audiobook version of um the woman on the train which i i felt like was a little bit more interspaced and interesting but i honestly don't remember because I read that, I listened to that like three years, three years ago while I was running. Um, so I don't kind of remember if it had that, that sudden like slow build up and then like sudden switch like these other ones did. But um, anyway, I'd be curious for any recommendations for yours because I, I want to like this style of book or this genre of book, but I think I'm just struggling so far um, with it. So anyway. That is all that I've read for the month of February and the first half of March. I'm in the middle of a couple of books right now, but um, I'm just, I wasn't able to finish them before this video. And you know, those other three, those first three books that I showed you have to go back to the library. So anyway, um, leave your comments down below. I appreciate that you're watching this and would love to kind of chat with you about books. If you're interested in seeing more book related videos, I'll try to add a few um, more in a little bit more regularly. Um, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're interested in planner related, especially Hobonichi related videos, I have lots of those as well. So thanks so much for watching. I will talk to you in the next video. Have a great weekend, week, whatever point in time it is. Um, have a great day. Bye everybody.